Hello everybody, welcome back for another session of the Hopry. My name is Mark Starr and tonight I'm going to drink another Goose. Now, Goose is a very unique style of beer. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and start opening this one as I speak about it. Since there's a cork on it, you never know. Sometimes these things can be damn near impossible to uh, open. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. But, um, you know, when we talk about Goose, we're talking about a very specific type of Lambic. These types of beers are a blend of one-year-old, two-year-old, and three-year-old Lambics. And the reason why they do this is because they want to, much like the way winemakers will blend, you know, like Cabernet and, you know, Syrah and other types of wines, what they're really trying to do is achieve a good amount of balance. So you have your younger lambics combined with, you know, some older lambics, and it really kind of helps, um, you know, round out those flavors. Now, I'm really hoping this thing doesn't goose on me, but uh, let's go ahead and pop it and see what happens. Nothing, so that's good. And so anyway, you know, Goose is a type of beer, or a style of beer, I should say, that I'm just going to come right out and tell you, it's hard to get into this style of beer. Now, um, I've always really liked the way bacon tastes with it. Um, you know, bacon, for some reason, its saltiness, its smokiness, um, its intensity always kind of plays off of it well. Now, as I've mentioned in the past, I'm not going to get into the habit, or at least I'm trying not to get into the habit, of pairing food with everything I drink. Uh, but again, a goose is, to be honest with you, it, it's pretty hard to just kind of drink by itself. Um, and I'll kind of explain why when we talk about the way it smells, the way it tastes, and, and things like that. So um, why don't we go ahead and do that. I'll, I'll go ahead and pour this one. We'll get a little bit in the glass here and start talking about it. Um, immediately before we talk about color, you'll probably notice that there's literally zero head on this thing. So um, let me see if I can't pull any out. Now the color on this one is a really vibrant golden straw color. Um, it is quite hazy. Um, I can't really see through this one a whole lot. You know, I could hold my fingers up to it and I can see the shadows. But um, actually a really nice golden color. Does remind me of the Cantillon Goose that I drank not too long ago. Um, again, there's hardly any head on this whatsoever. I can already start to smell some of the funkiness, but um, to be exact, let's go ahead and, and dig in. So there's a, there's a tart uh, pungency to it. Um, you know, it kind of tastes like, um, you know, an uncarbonated lemon-lime Sprite that just went bad. Um, you know, people talk about funky and, you know, like, like smelly cheese or funky feet. Um, you know, you can definitely tell this is for sophisticated folks. Now, I don't claim to be a sophisticated folk by any stretch of the imagination. I do try to drink a goose once in a while, you know, lambics, sour ales, things like that, just because I think it's important when you're trying to develop your palate that you explore different styles. You know, if we all just drank IPAs and stouts, we would never learn anything. So um, that's why I'm sharing this one with you tonight. Um, you know, I'm really hoping to like this one. I've had maybe, I don't know, three or four gooses in the last year. So this is probably one of the last ones that I can find here in the Kansas City market that I've not had yet. But um, let's get back to the aroma. So I do get a lot of lemon and lime funkiness out of this. Um, you know, I would say there's a slight floral component. I don't really smell any hops, though, and that's, you know, pretty traditional for one of these styles of beers. But I'm going to go ahead and taste it and see what we got. Boy, this one is really tart. Um, I will tell you, though, that I actually really like this one. Um, quite a while back, I did a review for the uh, Cantillon Iris. And the thing that I liked about the Cantillon Iris is that I thought it was going to taste more like this, more like a goose. 
But what that had that this does not have was a really huge hop presence. So this tastes a lot like the iris to me, but without any stretch of hops at all. But again, coming back to the bacon, I'm going to go ahead and try a piece of bacon with this. Just because, again, I think the smokiness and the saltiness and the crispiness, I mean, there's something about bacon anyway. I mean, who doesn't love bacon? And I made this so that it's really crispy as well, but... That definitely helps it out. Um, again, really tart, really acidic. There's virtually zero sweetness to this whatsoever. You know, we talk about the Flanders sour ales. Um, you know, some of the sours, they do have a bit of sweetness. And I really appreciate that because I think it kind of helps, um, you know, cut into the sourness, the tartness. There's none of that in here. This is, you know, I would say it's pretty extreme. It, it's pretty much just straight tart. But let me go ahead and, and let's try to get some more uh, flavors out of here. Um, I do get a bit of wood component in there. Um, I know that they age these in oak barrels and, and, you know, various other types of barrels. But a lot of times when beers are aged in oak, they tend to take on a sort of uh, vanilla component. I don't really get any vanilla out of this. I do taste the fact that um, they've aged this one in wood. Again, I think, <clears throat> excuse me, I think this one is pretty straightforward. Um, you know, this is very classic goose. Um, again, we're talking funkiness. Um, believe it or not, even though I say it's funky and it's got the lemon lime and, you know, um, kind of the stinkiness to it, it really is quite refreshing. I would say that the acidity is very good. Um, I like the way it just kind of sits on my tongue. Um, you know, it really kind of, I guess, lets you know that it's here. And uh, let me go ahead and give it another drink. There we go. I'm getting a little bit more head now after I poured that one a little bit hard. But even then, you know, it's just a it's just a faint amount of soapiness that just sits right on the top. Man, I love bacon. God, I could just eat bacon all day. Unfortunately, I can't, but so I don't know that I even really called out the uh, the brewery for this goose. But this is actually um, by Hansen's Artisanal, and you know they've been around since 1896. And, you know, of all the gooses that I've had, I would say this is probably one of my favorite, to be honest. Um, you know, when you, again, when you talk about the style, you know, it really is kind of hard to just drink one the first time and go, oh, I love this. Some people do. I actually um, sat with a guy not too long ago um, with some other friends. I tried it, you know, passed it along. He absolutely loved it. So, you know, trust your own palate. Try a goose. If you like that one, you'll probably like a lot of the others. But anyway, uh, my name is Mark Starr, and uh, I'm glad you came back to The Hoppery. Um, you can always follow me on Twitter at twitter.com backslash The Hoppery, and go to my website, www.thehoppery.com. And uh, we'll continue to move through these beers in 2010, all right? Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you later.